Hello YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. Now today we're going to actually implement the optimization problem and in this part two we're going to optimize for the maximum sharp ratio portfolio. So again the maximum sharp ratio is where you have the highest return for volatility. So it's the ratio between return and volatility, the highest possible sharp ratio is what we're going to be optimizing for and returning the weights. So um, let's jump straight into the code and continue working. So now we have our get data and portfolio uh, performance, weights, means and covariance matrix function sorted out. Um, we need to look at what optimization function um, we're trying to optimize. In the right hand corner of the screen here, you can see that um, this is the optimization problem um, for minimizing risk above a given return. So this is what we want to use in order to generate the efficient frontier later on. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on a small subset, which is um, getting the weights of the maximum sharp ratio portfolio, and we'll need that for later. So how we're gonna do that, we need to use a optimization function. Now, I know I'm saying maximize, but I actually propose that to maximize this, this uh, sharp ratio, we wanna minimize the negative sharp ratio. It's an equivalent statement. And this is actually, um, the reason we're doing this is because um, there's this optimization software um, through scipy.optimize that has great minimization functions. So we wanna utilize these packages in order to get um, well, our best bang for the buck from these solvers. So this is a constrained minimization of multivariate scalar functions and we're gonna be using the SLSQP. Now essentially what that stands for is sequential least squares programming algorithm. But all it means is that problems of this form where you have subject to constraints, minimizing a function um, within certain bounds, you need to implement it like this. And it's a great solver and you can, you can test all of them out here. So just the key things that we need to keep in mind is that we need to describe all constraints as fun or jack, um, and they need to be supplied in the dictionary. So just keeping that in mind, you can Google that optimization sci-pi. Okay, let's continue. So after we left off, let's now, um, now we're going to need a function, as we've just described, that actually gives us the negative sharp ratio um, of our overall portfolio. So let's define that function. So define negative sharp ratio. And the things that we want to import in there are going to be, we want to um, obviously have the weights, we're gonna need the mean returns, we're going to need the covariance matrix, and we're going to need um, the risk-free rate, if we wanna consider that. Now, just to make this easy, I am going to make that equal to zero. Force that to zero for now. Um, so great, let's, uh, let's now let's now get those get those values. So we're gonna use our portfolio performance function here. So we have our portfolio returns and standard deviations. Let's call them P returns and P standard deviations. And we're reading in the weights, mean, covariance matrix. And now we just need to return the sharp ratio, which again is simply the returns divided by the standard deviation. But if we wanna take into um, consideration the risk-free rate, we can actually subtract that from the returns. So the negative sharp ratio is just gonna be simply negative P returns minus the risk-free rate, all divided through by P standard deviations. Great, and that will give us, um, for a portfolio where we've defined the weights, that's gonna give us the negative sharp ratio of that portfolio. So now, um, let's get into implementing um, our actual algorithm. 
and using that uh, SciPy optimization function. So let's um, first import SciPy, import SciPy, and as SC, I like to use SC. Um, now I realized activate environment, we called that efficient yesterday. And we're going to have to pip install SciPy. So you can, you can do that now. Just while we're waiting for that to install, let's start with our function. So we need a function that's going to maximize our sharp ratio. So we want to read in the mean returns, we want to read in the covariance matrix, we want to read in the risk-free rate, but you know what, let's just define that um, as up here. And of course our, um, well the final parameter that I want to set is that um, the weights of every asset has to be between a lower bound and an upper bound. And um, that lower bound and upper bound you know, it be maybe makes sense to make zero and one at a start, but as we go through, maybe we want to force allocation to every stock um, that we're that we're giving this solver. So let's let's just call something like um, constraint set, and let's give it a tuple of lower and upper bounds. So yeah, zero and one for now. So max ratio. So we want to. Um, minimize m minimize the negative sharp ratio which is actually maximizing the sharp ratio um, by altering the weights of the portfolio so intuitively that's what we're trying to do here okay um, so first thing we need to know um, when data comes in through this is the number of assets so num assets is equal to the length of the mean returns. Um, yep, so mean returns there is just a, it's just a pandas data frame, so easy. Um, now we're gonna need arguments to send through this function. Um, so args are gonna be defined as, well, we're gonna need the mean returns, the risk-free rate. Yeah and we're not gonna include zero there. So that's our arguments that we're sending. Let's define our constraints, and remember they need to be a tuple. Constraint, there we go. Constraints, hopefully I can spell. Constraints equal, now remember we have to define the type of constraints they are, and they're gonna be um, equations, and their type of constraints, sorry, are gonna be fun. Now, again, you can look into the documentation and the difference between fun and Jack um, by just Googling it online. So simply a lambda function where we're gonna take the weight and we're going to do a numpy sum of all the weights and we're gonna make sure that they're equal to one. So essentially these fun constraints, um, uh, yeah, they're inequalities um, or your strict, strict, this is a strict equality statement that all the summations of the weights in the portfolio have to add up to one. So you can pretend this whole thing equals zero and then you know the sum of all the weights need to equal one. So a simple statement and that's held in a dictionary in constraints. So um, we're going to say that the bounds are equal to the constraint set which is just that tuple of zero and one. And now, so bound equals bounds. Um, let's make that a tuple for every asset. So bound for asset in range number of assets. So for every single asset, we want to we want to make this bound, and we could we could say that we're happy to have um, a higher allocation for certain sectors um, and lower for others. Um, but you know we, we can get into that in time. That's what makes that constraint set so valuable um, for tinkering with later on. So we've set the bounds. Now now we need to get into the results. 
um, and we need to use the minimization function minimize pretty sure that's lower m now the first argument is what we're trying to minimize and of course um, here that's going to be our negative sharp ratio we want to maximize sharp ratios so minimize negative sharp ratio easy statement the next one is your parameter um, of how, how you're going to do that so we need the number of assets times by one divided by the number of assets so we essentially what this is saying is this is this is the weight of the portfolio and this is our initial guess so we need to take an initial guess with this function on what our portfolio weights are going to be doing and all this is doing is saying um, here's the total number of assets um, you know so total number of assets and we're just saying that the weights are going to be um, one divided by the total number of assets so just equal allocation for a first guess so if we had 10 assets um, this would just be a list of 1 over 10 for, for 10 assets so yep pretty pretty good first guess so I'm happy with that um, now we're going to move on to the arguments and we're just going to make that equal to args function that we've defined and that's going to read in the mean returns the covariance matrix and the risk-free rate back into this function that we've actually defined up here now we didn't need to add um, we don't need to add the weights in there because the first parameter defined by this function is what we're actually optimizing over so that's how it's set up. You can set up a function and it knows that the first parameter that you haven't defined is the thing you're trying to optimize over. So um, we can't forget to describe the method that we're going to, going to use. It's a sequential least squares and bounds equal bounds as we've defined. So that's just um, the tuples of 0 to 1 and the constraints of course we can't forget as constraints. So we've got our function of which we're trying to minimize um, by changing the first parameter weights. We've given an initial guess for those first weights. Um, we've defined our arguments for that function. Um, we've defined the method we've defined the bounds that we want uh, the weights to stay within for each asset and we've listed our constraints that the summation of all the weights must be equal to one great so um, let's give that a whirl so we want to return that result um, so what have we got up here how about we group all this up here with our functions save that down and let's give that a crack so we've got our standard returns uh, we've got a negative ratio we just need to actually return this function so that's just going to equal results and we're going to print that result. Now you'll notice this just doesn't give us a perfect number. This gives us, um, this gives us everything exported from that optimization function. And you'll see what that does here in the bottom in a second. Has no attribute minimize. Okay, what are we missing there? SciPy minimize. Okay, uh, we forgot one important thing. We need to go uh, scipy.optimize. Optimize.minimize. And have we spelled optimize wrong? Hmm, we might actually need to find that at the top. Eh, 
Excellent. So that seems like it's been imported there. Interesting. Let's try that again. Always debugging to be done, even on the go. So we can see the arrays there. Um, we can see that we've got our value um, of the sharp ratio in fun. Um, we have our weights in Jack, so our array um, for our variables. That's interesting. Excellent. Um, oh, actually, sorry, we've got our values for X um, that we've optimized over at the bottom here in X. And in fun, we have the uh, solution minimization on the value function. So that's the sharp ratio. So essentially what we want to do is just point to those results and we can either do it by going results fun equals sharp ratio or max sharp ratio and we can also dedicate in that same line the um, max weights or the allocation of that portfolio. And that we're going to do by just going like that. Oh yeah, we haven't actually printed those. That'd be nice. There we go. Awesome. So as you can see there, it's telling us that there's a max sharp ratio of um, 0.9% um, over that time period and we should have put all our eggs in um, in basket number number one and that would be in CBA. So that's very interesting. So it's, it's ordered there by, um, obviously when it comes through the function, um, that data frame that comes in on the weights is actually, or the mean returns is actually ordered by um, alphabetical order. So it would have been BHP, CBA and Telstra. Excellent. So now we have this function, we've optimized for the sharp returns. In the next episode, what we're going to do is actually focus on the minimum portfolio variance. Once we have that function, we'll be able to um, use the combination of both of those uh, optimization functions to then build the efficient frontier. So thank you very much for watching part two uh, of the Efficient Frontier building web application and we'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Cheers.